do you talk about this great thing called earthing? Talk about that. I, I think I'm going to do it the rest of my life. I feel like I do it with every step I take now. It's really, um, yeah. I think it's like, like I hope people walk away, first of all, earthing as they do, but you know, every step they're taking, they're, they're acknowledging this connection, even if it's subliminally now, you know, acknowledging this connection we have to this planet that we're on. I mean, it all comes back to that again, right? This place that we share in space. The planet is alive as well. And we need to acknowledge our connection, feet on it. I don't care if you have shoes on or not. You don't have to do the traditional go out there with your bare feet in the sand if you don't want to. But like, just consider this connection that we have to the planet and then to the sky. Because I think it's just this beautiful thing to consider your feet are on this planet, and then just to look up and just gaze night or day at what wraps around us. And it is awesome and wonderful. And it, it, I, I really believe it speaks to your, you know, conspiracy of goodness. It's, it, it's, we can conspire to get people connected to, <laughs> to earth. And then I think it brings out good in you. I really do. I think it brings out, it brings out goodness. Now, um, I'm wondering if you might have a strategy or two for us because, um, you know, back to the hard reality as we were floating out there cosmically a minute ago, I just have to share that this morning I went out to feel my bird feeder and we got frost on the ground in Vermont, supposed to yeah. get a nor'easter tomorrow, oh, foot wow. and a half. Uh, but I, I went barefoot. Um, I walked barefoot on these big giant stones that are probably glacial out to fill my bird feeder and back. And I just want to, I just want to tell people that I want them to try that wherever you live, try and get a, your feet on the earth at some point each day. Yesterday I did it as well. And the day before, since speaking to you, walked out in my frosty grass and uh, went, went in the woods barefoot just for a few minutes. And I tell you, it's something, it's almost um, a therapy. It's therapeutic. It feels therapeutic. So related to that, I want to see if you've got any strategies for coping that we could use, because I'm sure there's a moment like <laughs> when that rocket starts below your, your seat, you know, you know so much, you've done so much training, everything's set. You probably don't have a, a, a bit of fear in your bones and it's, you're probably, that was replaced by wonder. But I mean, day-to-day -day life, it gets us confused, angry, you know, feeling under threat. Do you have any strategies um, for the mental health aspect of just everyday life that you learned from your time in space? Do you have some, I repeat to myself every once in a while, no feeling lasts forever. That that's my number one strategy. Yeah. When I'm frightened or, or something, I say no feeling lasts forever. And I just get busy and time passes and something happens to change the scenario. So that's my little coping skill. Do you have anything that space has taught you for a coping skill you might share with us? Yeah, that I mean, and that's a good one. I, I'm going to steal it. I think the thing that I brought back that has been the most helpful to me is well, a couple things. One is this idea of significance. And I, I think it's incredible how, how easily we can consider ourselves insignificant, right? And, and a lot of that plays into this, you know, like weighting us down, like burden in a way that I think I think we need to free ourselves of that sometimes because actually I think we just need to free ourselves of it is. So when I went to space the first time I had heard a lot of like the early guys who flew, um, especially the ones who went to the moon and saw earth as this sphere, you know, this, you know, hanging in space. And some of them use the word, you know, insignificant, like we are insignificant in the grand scheme of things and all. And I, I remember even when I heard that thinking, Oh my gosh, I hope they mean what they really mean is not like a negative connotation of insignificance, but more that they were in awe, that they were humbled by what they experienced. And I get goosebumps thinking about it. And when I got the chance to speak to them, that is absolutely what they meant. And it made me like, you know, it's like there was this weight lifted <laughs> and, you know, and I remember getting to space still kind of carrying that with me. Like, am I going to feel that way? Like we're insignificant. And first look out the window. Absolutely. I was like, oh my gosh, there is no ins insignificance in any of this. Total significance. I'm looking back at this earth that's just glowing and all the colors we know earth to be. It is this 
you know, this vision of what we could, of a future we could bring for ourselves. We have the opportunity to create a future that's as beautiful (laughs) as it looks from space. Right. And that, and it just got me thinking about things like, man, this planet that we're on and that, that was that reality. Oh my gosh, we live on a planet, you know, like, duh. And, but this planet, perfect distance from the sun. That's totally significant. You know, none of the other ones are. There's not this beautiful veil, thin blue line of atmosphere wrapping around any of the other ones that I believe very purposefully is there to protect us. Sure, in the grand scheme of things, we're small. We are this tiny little place in this ginormous universe. But as um, many, I'm sure, will um, reinforce, size is not... (laughs) is not always the most important thing, right? You know, I mean, it's like, it just became as clear as those colors were on the planet, our significance became crystal clear. And it got me thinking about this. We we met each other. I don't know why, but I think there's purpose in it, right? I think that's significant that, that we're having this conversation now, that people come into our lives. And I think One of the coping things, just in my long rambly way as usual, is to acknowledge that significance, to look inside ourselves for the gifts that we bring, and to be so grateful for the significance that comes through the people we share our lives with. And I'm looking down at my black dog on the ground for the creatures that we share life with, you know? That's a big one. And number two, back to the earthing. Um, I try every day to have this transcendent feeling, this like awe and wonder feeling that I felt when I was floating in front of the window looking out at Earth. And the closest thing I've come to down here on the planet from a real feeling, not necessarily physical feeling, but like in you kind of feeling is through that earthing and just taking a couple minutes a day to really meditate. I mean, really meditate. And, um, and you can do that in all people have all different kinds of ways of doing that, but really letting yourself be still and, and do that. I find it just, it kind of ekes out into the other encounters of the day. <laughs>